Welcome to our B series. My name is James Nganga, a research assistant working for B Health. I'm in charge of honey processing, packaging, and also we do quality control. But I will take you through honey processing, packaging, and value addition. Once you receive honey from the farmers, you may require to have an extractor, that is uh, the manual extractor, so that, so that after harvesting, you are able now to extract your honey and save energy for your bees. Secondary, you are supposed to have this uncapping fork. Uh, it's for uh, removing capping from the honey. For the farmers, we agreed on hygiene. When they harvest honey from their frames like this, they are able to put in their buckets. So once you take it to the processing, your honey, pure honey should be capped like this. This is an indication of a mature honey. So, so this is, when it comes now to extraction, you make sure you remove all these cappings using a fork. Then from there, you, you put it in the extractor. But now this one holds a capacity of three stroke six frames. So once you turn it around like this, your honey will direct come out. So the only thing here is the centrifugal power. We normally use centrifugal power so that the honey comes out. The other option is, this is a modified frame. For those who normally harvest honey from traditional log hives, they put those combs here, then you put it like a booklet this way. Once you put it inside the extractor, the honey will come out. You, you using the centrifugal force, slowly by slowly you let the honey drip slowly by slowly. From here, I'm able now to take my honey to the honey processor. This is the water jacket. With this water jacket, it, it's, a, it's a container with water in between the, two, con, between the two tanks. So what we do here, we heat like degrees of 30 degrees so that the honey becomes lighter and it's able to go through the sieves. I have some sieves, these are three sieves, but now using the material sieve, it's easy to suck all the impurities in the honey. Honey coming out, dripping, but now it's warm a bit, so what you do, you give it 24 hours. This, all this junk will pass through the sieve, but through the material, you are still left with, with some, uh, some, uh, some of the, the impurities. And that's why we normally use two materials. If it goes through the first one, it will go through the last one. And by the end of the day, once it goes through the, th the, the two materials, you, get, you, are, you, are, you are left with gold honey. Green honey, which has, not, which has nothing like materials. This process of heating is very sensitive because you don't, if you overheat your honey, you are going to destroy all the enzymes. So you have to be more hygienic especially when it comes to processing. And also you let it settle for 24 hours so that you're able to remove the scum and do the packaging. Those farmers at home who cannot access this kind of machines, they normally use two methods. There's a, what we call a water bath, whereby they use two kind of a stainless, maybe sulfurias, they dip one another, then in hot water. But now the challenge is the degrees. There are people who normally use a thermometer to weigh the, the, the degrees, then from there, it's easy for them to do the packaging. Then for, for those who doesn't heat the honey, when it froze like the, the way it is, you find they get a big rose because the honey is still thick. So like for a, a, a jar of 100, 500 grams, it accommodates a lot of honey because it's still thick. Now the next step is to do honey process, is to do the packaging. My honey is already settled. So what I do next, I normally do the packaging with the, depending with the size of the jars. Like this one is 200 grams jars. Then from there we are able to weigh, put the rebels, then uh, the honey is ready to go out for the market. Honey which has been processed, you can either sell it as a pure honey. This is a pure processed stingless bee honey from all farmers in Kakamega Forest. But you can also flavor your honey. What we use as flavor are mostly cinnamon, it can be a clove, it can be lemongrass. All these are products which uh, have a certain medicinal value. Honey is said also to have some good property 
in maintenance of the skin and therefore you can also use honey as the green yet and that is why you see here we have uh, for honey soap the second product is the propolis propolis is a gum which uh, bees they collect from trees and it has some antibacterial properties one of the most easiest way is to do the propolis tincture which you see here and this is mainly when you have a sore throat you can use it and we teach farmers how to to do it we can also pack the propolis in capsules, as you see here. The third product is royal jelly, produced by young nurse bees in the hive. That's what makes the queen to be bigger in body size and productive and to live longer. Royal jelly is known to have a lot of uh, medicinal uh, uh, properties to boost your immunity, make you young, vitality, so many things. Some people, they convert it to tablets, but it's always advisable to get a good recommendation for the, from a doctor to know how uh, to use it. The fourth one is uh, the bee wax. We can make candles as you see here. You have some which uh, doesn't have any scent. You have those which is really pure wax as you see here. Some of them we have uh, colored them. You can also add a scent to your, your candle. If you have done many study when it comes to mosquito repellents and have identified plants which are very efficient and done lab tests which have proven that yes it repels. And therefore, you can use uh, these plants in making uh, a repellent candle. We try to, to make different gift set using different type of uh, packaging materials. They can now pack it, label it, and then sell. So this is just a way to give more income to the farmer. The bee bread is the pollen which the bees they collect from uh, flower is also uh, a very good source of protein. Another product, uh, hive product, which I've not said here, is the bee venom, okay, which is a, a high value product, which is good money on the market. Look at the whole uh, processing of bee product. You realize that uh, from everything which a farmer uh, harvests from a hive, he can recycle all of them and have them practically reused. So this is, means that uh, there's no waste which comes out from the honeybee product. Welcome to Quality Control Lab for honey here at Isipe. One of the major parameters that we do, we check here, is the moisture content. That, uh, that is the amount of water in your honey this is very important because the higher the amount of water, it shows that your honey can get spoiled easily. And again, it shows that your honey, while being harvested, met the criteria or it was harvested properly. The second parameter that we do check here is the sugar content of the honey. This is done to check the three sugars. Sucrose is the major sugar that is being checked because it's the cause of adulteration being that people will add sugar into your honey in order to increase the quantity without checking the health effect. And again, we have other several parameters which include the proline, which shows how ripe your honey is while harvesting. Then we have the diastase and emylase and invertase. These are enzymes which shows that your honey is good for consumption and it will be of health benefit. Again, here we check the conductivity of your honey, which shows the minerals present in your honey, determining how healthy it is. Honey has got physical properties which differ in different honeys based on where the honey was collected. And the collection side is being surrounded by different vegetations, which infer the different colors that we might have in our honeys. This is from a single plant called Dombea. Being from a monofloral plant, this means that the color will be uniform. Another honey which has a different color but is from the mixed shrubs. The mixed shrubs infer the color because of the different flowers that the honeybee visits. The darker honey doesn't mean that it's good or it's bad, just that the color is as a result of the kind of the bees and the plants that it has visited. When it's being stored, it will undergo processes which are normal. For example, crystallization is something that people tend to think it's a bad process, but honey crystallizes because of the sugars present in it. 
For example, here we have our honey having two layers, the upper one, which is the fructose, and the lower one, which is the glucose, and it's the normal, it means that our honey is good. The two sugars having different properties separate. That's why we have the crystallization. Different honeys have uh, different viscosity, but this viscosity is being checked by the moisture content, which should be less than 21%. The, the moisture content being less than 21% infers a specific thickness to your honey, which means lighter honey is not good, and it shows that it has been adulterated by addition of water, or it was being harvested when it was rainy season, which means it was okay, but they harvested at the wrong time. And beside the honey being thick, there are other honeys being produced by stingless bees, which have higher moisture content. They will not be thicker as compared to the honeys from the honey bee because of the nature of the flowers being visited by the stingless bees. This marks the end of our episode on honey processing and quality control. Look out on our next episode and remember to subscribe.